Howdy, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be mixing up some chemicals and I'm going to show you the equipment I use to do it. And we're going to be making the official Kodak Rimjet pre-bath. So first of all, I like to use these amber glass bottles because they are the gold standard when it comes to keeping your chemicals for a long time. They really work good. We're going to use a digital scale, a magnetic stirrer, some distilled water, some sodium sulfite anhydrous, some borax, and some sodium hydroxide. This is the formula that I'm going to be using. And you can go ahead and screenshot, pause it, and we're going to go through these steps. So I have these papers for each chemical. We're going to weigh them out and then mix them according to the formula. Also, we're going to want to be safe. We're going to want to use a mask and some goggles and gloves. Now, all these pieces of equipment aren't absolutely necessary, but you are going to want to have something to stir your chemicals and measure them out. You don't need to buy all these chemicals to make a rim jet remover, but this is by far the cheapest, most economical and efficient way to do it. Baking soda might sound like quick, cheap, and affordable, and it probably is for the first few times, but it will add up eventually. It will definitely add up. All these chemicals that I bought costed me a grand total of $45, and that is enough to make 45 liters. And 45 liters is going to develop, get ready for this, is going to develop 1,800 rolls. If you didn't hear that correctly, 1,800 rolls is a lot. One liter will develop 40 rolls. I'm going to measure out 50 grams twice. Next, we'll measure out the borax. And we're going to want to keep this as accurate as possible just to ensure that we are indeed following the formula best we can. And like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be able to do 40 rolls with one liter. Baking soda isn't going to be able to have that kind of longevity or performance. I think you're really going to like this formula because it's going to eliminate a lot of steps. Basically, you're only going to have one extra step from your normal C41 development. And this process only is a 10 second deal. You only need to use the pre-bath for 10 seconds. The last chemical we're going to measure out is the sodium hydroxide. And it only needs one gram. That one pound container will be able to make, I believe, 430 or something like that liters. So we got plenty of that super affordable it was only like 16 dollars for that one pound now we got all these chemicals measured out and these sheets of paper are going to make it easy to pour into the beaker so i heated up the water to a little over 80 degrees but somewhere between 80 and 100 degrees will work and we got to keep in mind every time we dump a chemical into the beaker it might slow down our magnetic stirrer so we might have to speed it up from time to time we don't want it to go like crazy fast through the entire time we just want it to be gently stirring it for us also the sodium sulfite is going to cool down the chemical like drastically so after i dump that in there i think i'm going to have to heat it up again just to make sure that these chemicals are going to dissolve efficiently. I really don't think you need to keep the water hot. I think they will eventually mix up. But if you want them to, you know, dissolve quicker or, you know, without taking overnight or something like that, and you need to use it right away, yeah, you're going to want to keep it and, you know, warm. Also, I really enjoy using this magnetic stir. It's been making mixing chemicals 
so much easier than just mixing it with a hand stir. Not that you, there's anything wrong with that, but it just makes things a lot slicker. Finally, we're going to mix the sodium hydroxide. And I've already heated up the water back to 100 degrees. And this sodium hydroxide is quite a bit sticky. <laughs> so it, it's going to take a little bit to take off the paper there and off the spoon. Just let it dip it in the water there and you'll get the rest of it off. Like the direction said, fill it up to 800 milliliters. And then once you've got the chemicals to dissolve almost completely, you can go ahead and top it off to the thousand milliliter mark. And you're gonna to wanna to turn your magnetic stirrer off if you have one, just so you can see the proper level. And we're gonna bring it up to a thousand milliliters. Now that the chemicals basically have dissolved, um, temperature isn't too critical anymore. It'll it'll be just fine. We're gonna top it off to a thousand milliliters right now. All right, now that we got it up to a thousand milliliters, we'll turn back the magnetic stirrer and stir for a few more minutes just to make sure we have completely dissolved all the chemicals. Once you're ready to pour it into the jar, you can screen it if you'd like. Um, I do that sometimes. Um, especially after using the chemicals over and over again. And I see sediments or things floating in there. I will screen them out with a coffee filter and we'll be good to go. It looks like it needs to be stirred a little longer. So I'm going to put that magnetic piece right back in there and let it stir for a little longer. All right, looks like the chemicals have completely dissolved. And really quick, I'm going to do a pH level test. Yeah, these little strips are super handy to have. And uh, we'll see what the pH is at. So this is a darker green. And according to the scale, this would put the pH to 9.8 to 9.9. .9. That's pretty aculine. That's really good. I think uh, sodium bicarbonate, it doesn't even get to 9. And this one's almost at a 10 on the pH scale. So that shows that it's uh, pretty aculine and it's going to work very well. So normally on my developers, um, not my stop, sometimes not even my fix and stuff like that, I would uh, top it off with some butane just to give it a good oxygen barrier. Probably we'll do that to this one, um, but we're going to do a test real quick. So here we have a roll of Kodak Vision 3 500T. And I'm going to sacrifice the leader there to do this test and demonstrate how well this pre-bath works. So I'm just going to cut off the edge there, the tip of that leader.
Okay, so I'm going to give it 10 seconds. We're going to dip it in there and then we will pull it out and rinse it and we will see how well it works. Now mind you, we are not going to do any agitation. It's just going to sit there and soak. And like magic, the rim jet is completely removed. When I develop a roll, I'm probably going to just give it a slight 10 second agitation and then a couple of rinses and we're off to the races. No rim jet. And I'm definitely not gonna be wiping it. I, I did not like the idea of using a towel or anything a sponge or even a microfiber cloth to wipe my film. I don't like to do that. I don't use Kim wipes after the developments. I just rinse it with distilled water and I let it hang in this bathroom and I don't get any dust. But like I said, I always use distilled water. But yeah, check it out. The proof is in the pudding. If you are not convinced, I don't know what's going to convince you. This stuff is amazing. 10 seconds versus a couple minutes inside this stuff. And it's reusable. Look at that. It looks perfectly like fine. Nothing's happened to it. Yeah, this stuff's going to go, go the distance. Way cheaper. Way more effective. You can't beat this. So if you made it to the end of this video, well, thanks for watching. Go out and make some Kodak pre-bath.